Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today we're going to continue our series on the people who make using Prototrax. Today we are in Los Alamitos, California at a company called Professional Bearing Service, and we're going to go in and see how these guys do what they do. They're specialists in making Babbitt bearings, and so what we want to do is learn a little bit more about the whole business of making Babbitt bearings. So why don't you follow me inside and we'll learn a little bit together. Pat, how are you? Welcome to Professional Bearing. Good to see you, Dom. It's been a while. It's been a yeah. while. So I'm so excited to be here today and get a chance to talk to you guys and maybe show the rest of the people out there a little bit more about what you guys do as well as what Babbitt bearings and such are. So I got a few questions for you, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, Babbitt bearings are usually made of uh, copper, bronze, steel, and cast iron, and they're lined with a Babbitt lining. Babbitt is a very soft metal. It's made of a tin copper and antimony. And this is an example of a Babbitt bearing that comes into us where it wipes out, the Babbitt actually gets destroyed and we recast the Babbitt in there, remachine the part. And so that's basically our function to do repair or manufacturing of Babbitt bearings. Let's take a look at this. This is an example of a bearing that will come to us that has been damaged and we call it wiped. Basically, this is the Babbitt, this inside area. This is a bronze shell. In this case, the shell is so badly damaged that we had to make a new part. So the basic stage of this would be when we make this blank over here, we cast Babbitt into this blank over here. Then we do a lot of machining on this thing, and this thing is actually not in a finished state. It has one more operation where we do the finished machining, because our customers many times have their own dimensions they want us to machine to. So we will stock this type of part in our inventory for quick turnarounds for our customers. Once the part's gone through an incoming inspection, we melt out the old Babbitt, prep the shell, and recast new Babbitt into the bearing shell. Looks hot. Babbitt is cast around 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So what is that stuff? Basically, it's a, a, a material which will keep it from leaking out the bottom. Okay. Now they'll create a directional cooling, cooling the shell from the outside so the Babbitt solidifies against the shell first. Okay. Uh, this will probably take about 20 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes before it solidifies. So it looks a lot like lead, but it's not really. Right? No, it's tin. Well, they do make Babbitt in lead, uh, but this is a tin copper antimony Babbitt. Babbitt is a term like bronze. There's all kinds of bronzes. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of Babbitt too. This is an aluminum oil seal that we manufacture. This is an oil ring. This is how the bearings get lubricated. Basically, this sits like this. The shaft sits on top of here, uh, underneath here like this. As it rotates, the ring rotates, goes into a sump of oil, and lubricates the bearing. And so this is a split ring, which is quite difficult to manufacture because it has to be within three thousandths, not out of round on the inside diameter. We also stock some parts that a couple of OEMs provide. These are some examples of those over here. Pat, this is a, uh, a bearing that has been cast and rough machined and had some milling done to it. Okay. Now, we're not repairing the outside diameter on this part. We will be hand scraping this face because we don't want to change the outside diameter by doing too, being too rough on this surface. It will be put together now and be finished machined in a lathe. Many of the bearings we do require RTDs or temperature detectors in them. Tony has installed RTD in here and right now he's checking the continuity in the RTD. That's part of the idea behind a Babbitt bearing is the Babbitt is a sacrificial metal. So if something goes wrong, the Babbitt will wipe and you can send the bearing in for repair versus you know, damaging your shaft and, and damaging the whole motor, pump, or whatever it is. 1978, my dad calls me up. I'm an engineering student at, uh, in college, and he wants to open this business. And I say, I have nothing else to lose. Let's give it a shot. So we opened the shop, two men working on these parts, one lathe, one mill, one pouring pot. And it's been 42 years that we've been here doing this. Yeah, so I know that, uh, you know, of course, I met you guys the first time about 10 years ago. And it took about four years of uh, stopping in and seeing you guys talking. You were always cordial to me and gave me the time of day and kind of felt there was a little bit of a fit. And then eventually, about six years ago, you bought your first Proto Track, and then it kind of all moved on since then. So yeah, it w I, I saw the Track product at a, uh, a uh, customer of mine, and I realized it would be a great fit in here, but I just had to figure out how to fit it in here. And I believe I called 
uh, Southwest Industries and you showed up one day and then you kept showing up over and over. Not a hard sell at all, but you did a great job. And eventually we, we bought one machine and now it's you know, morphed into many machines. Now we can ship things to our customers same day delivery, if need be. We will have things ready for them and we finish it to their much, uh, their sizes manually sometimes, or sometimes in the CNC department here in the same day. Very cool. So I'm curious, how many uh, track machines do you guys have now? Joe? <laughs> <laughs> we got one, two, three, six, eight. Eight of them, wow. Eight. We started with one. This is the first one here, actually. Yeah, so, imagine that. See, Chris, there. if you would have started 10 years ago, you could have you know 10 what? If I just would have listened to you, <laughs> if I just would have listened to my wife, I'd been married 10 years earlier, too. <laughs> That's true, true. We got three eights, uh, we got part there, which is not there now, but He's here, sometimes he'll be running all three at the same time, you know, doing different things. This, this here is a bearing shell, which we'll be pouring it into it, and you guys see them pouring it. Yep, we saw that process a little yeah. earlier. Yeah, it's really similar, neat. actually, similar bearing to this, which allows us to run them together and be more productive all at the same time. We got Travis here, he's running the mill. And the, all the track tools in the well, Southwestern when we started, you know, track, it's been very beneficial to us because it allows us to switch over quick. Because right now we're doing a production run, but Chris could come over any minute and say, hey, there's a new order, it's rushed, we need to get it in. And we're able to stop and get going on the next one without losing you know, half a day of downtime. I think it's been crucial. Obviously, all the track machines have been crucial to what we've been able to do here because they help us in that. And the conversational and, you know, Travis can make all the programs himself and do certain things. And guys even, I mean, Arthur was, didn't have zero experience when he started here. He did learn track tools at OCC, so that was a help. He, he had a really had. good instructor. Yeah. It makes such a big difference, though, with what we're able to provide to our customers. Huge. Well, you know, we always try to explain to people that the key product, uh, the key behind our product really is the fact that it's built for prototype machining, it's built for engineering, it's built for low volume and high mix. And I think you guys are example of exactly what we're talking about. The fact that what you do changes from day to day. Sometimes you just need one or two and sometimes maybe you're able to make six or twelve. But we feel very, very excited about the fact that our product line has also helped you guys to be able to do what you've done and create what you got going on here, which is just fantastic. Well, it's not only helped us, it's enabled us in many ways to be able to do so. If you say day to day, sometimes it's hour to hour where things change. It's not priorities are constantly shifting. Well, you know how I've watched everything you guys have done and how you've grown and everything else. Maybe eventually you guys are going to own the whole building here. In fact, maybe it'll even go far enough where Los Alamitos will have to change the name out front to be a pro bearing way. Wouldn't that be really a neat thing to see happen? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's coming. That would be great. Hey, everybody. On behalf of the entire crew at Professional Bearing Service, I want to thank you guys for watching this video, learning a little bit more about them as well as a little bit more about Track Machine Tools. We'll see you in the next video, but until then, remember as always to keep on tracking!